Welcome back to Good Morning La, La Land. It is an absolute pleasure to welcome to the show James Sturdy. Thank you so much for being here oh, today. Oh, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for having me. So nice show, to friend. meet you. Me. Nice so to meet nice. you. Way to make our Monday. So you've got an incredible new project that you're acting in, Danger mm -hmm. One. Tell us about it. Oh, it's a lot of fun. It's about a couple of paramedics who go on 911 call, find a million dollars on a dead body, decide to keep it, and <laughs> everything goes wrong from there. Oh, that's <laughs> like any given Monday in La La Land. Yeah, I mean, it's a great way to start your week if that's the call that you get. But it's, I mean, it's a really good action film. It's got great actors, Tom Everett Scott, Dennis O'Hare. It's set in one night, so it's one of those movies that just never quits. It's a ride, honestly. Wow. Like everyone was making it, we're like, we really hope this turns into like a theme park ride one day. Wow. You know, <laughs> the, get in the ambulance and you don't quit till it's over. Well, let's take a look at the trailer. All right. Homeboy somehow jammed a million dollars in here. Hey, we're almost there. Just let the hospital deal with it. Let's just imagine for a moment. Let's say we don't turn it in. And we just keep it. I'm I'm not hearing this. I'm not hearing this. You're not here, of course, idiot. One minute. You report that stuff the moment you walk through the door. Wow. <laughs> that would be a little tempting, you know? It's like just right there, no one needs to know anything. That's the thing about the movie. I think it's like a morality tale as well. Like you leave the movie wondering what would you do if you were in that situation? I think that was one of the reasons that so many people were drawn to the project. Mm -hmm. So what would you do? Oh. <laughs> That's put you on the spot. Right there. After you see this movie, I think the right thing to do would be just don't look at it. Pretend it's not there. Right. Yeah. So I love that you'd run around the block, right? What's up with that? No, seriously. Yeah, I've been doing that since I was a, uh, since I was a little kid. So what yeah, happened at eight? You're just like, I'm just going to get up. Yeah, no, and... I mean, I'd go on walks with my parents, and then I'd you know, just want to run around the block like I'd have to do it. And now my, my friends and I got fixated on this steps meter. I'm not sure if you're familiar oh, yes. with it, where you have to do like 10,000 steps a day <laughs> in order to oh, no. like meet your quota. So I try to get as many of those in during the morning so that I can like relax throughout the course of the day. So la la land. Yeah. So how many steps are you getting in the morning? Well, with those three with those three laps, I can get in a good like four or 5,000. Wow. So I'm like already ahead of most people. By like yeah. Yeah. Certainly yeah. out of me. I <laughs> <laughs> from the house to my right. Fiat to the right. studio. I had one of those Fitbits, and it said by the time I was at the studio, it was like, I was like 10,000 steps. I said, this thing doesn't really work that well. <laughs> you were surprised really how many out. laps you can do just walking around. You know what we need? We need one that counts thoughts. <laughs> that would go. be pretty profound. Oh, you get 10,000 thoughts in by 7 a.m. That would be a yeah. big deal. Yeah. So what was your childhood like? It was wonderful. You know, I, I grew up here in L.A., and um, my parents spent a lot of time taking me to movies, basically, and that's why I fell in love with movies. And, uh, I, you know, I, I'm fortunate enough to be able to be making some now, and it all goes back to the love of uh, storytelling and filmmaking that they kind of instilled in me. What was the first movie you fell in love with? Do you remember? I do, I do. It was, it was a Robert De Niro film called Midnight Run. Do you remember yeah. that? Of course, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> film, yeah. My parents took me to see it. I, I didn't know what was going on. All I knew was that I liked it, and I wanted to do that one day. Yeah. yeah. So we have to ask you about the question. So how do you direct your mind on what you want to manifest versus what you do not want to manifest? Sure, sure. No, absolutely. I mean, you just really have to visualize it. I think that, you know, we're all living kind of a visual medium, like life is a visual medium, TV is a visual medium, movies are a visual medium. And, you know, you have to look at something and kind of imagine it existing like where we are right now. And I think that's the best way to project it happening. Did you do that early in life and that's how you got to where you are now? Do you attribute No, it, it take, took time. Yeah. You know, it takes time, like, the, you know, overcoming the, the obstacles and the challenges and, and the distractions takes time. But I think now I'm, I'm at a place where it's, it's natural to do that. Well, now that you've mastered manifesting, what's next for you? Um, hopefully more movies. Mm -hmm. <laughs> more movies with good manifestations. <laughs> are there particular kind of roles that you love playing the most? Yeah, I mean, I, I really like the physical stuff, the physical stuff that really challenges, you know, in, in this project, you know, we, we have to do a lot of action, but we have to do a lot of research. Like, I, I took some ride-alongs with some real-life paramedics and got the chance to see what it's like to be out there for the EMTs, and it's, it's really, really fascinating to see, you know, the different perspectives. I think the research is the part that really is one of the best things that is mm -hmm. this you know, business. Super cool. Mm -hmm. So cool. I think that acting is, 
is such a, I think it's a very spiritual thing personally, mm -hmm. because you, you, you realize and you get distance from what your identity is because right. you go, oh, I can just take on this new identity. And then you can kind of just choose what you want to be for that day. How has it helped you in your personal life to just be able to not attach to who you think you are? Oh, it's, it's given me great, much greater perspective because you're able to kind of, like you said, to kind of have an out of body experience in the sense that you distance yourself from you know, your, your real world and you mm -hmm. put yourself in these other people's shoes. And, you know, in this particular film, you get to ask yourself, you know, what would you do if you were in this guy's shoes? And thank God you're not in this guy's <laughs> shoes. <laughs> you know, you're, yeah, right. you're, you're in a, you know, a much different place. You know, you should be mm -hmm. grateful and blessed. And uh, it really forces you to examine like different, different uh, scenarios that you could be in in life, right. you know? So interesting. I, uh, so, of course, I work in the helping profession, work with lots of people that work in different forms of the helping profession, mm -hmm. whether they're paramedics or police officers or people that work in the crisis center. And w sort of the heart of a lot of what they do is mindfulness. Right. You know, they have to really slow everything down, mm -hmm. really be very mindful um, about what they're thinking, what they're saying and what they're doing. Sure. In this role, mm -hmm. you know, as a paramedic, did you learn any of that? Were you sort of or maybe even just taking some of the mindfulness stuff you had practiced in the past? and? deepening it there in the role? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. Yeah. Because I mean, they're in the business of saving lives. Mm -hmm. So they've got to be very mindful of how they treat people, of how they talk to people, you know, giving hope to people, letting them know it's going to be okay. They're going to make it through. So, I mean, those were, those were definitely <laughs> things that you, had, that you had to keep in, in, in consideration. Mm -hmm. You know, in this particular film, we're just trying to survive. The characters are just trying to make it. So that was what they were mindful of, just making it through the night. I just have this visual of like the ambulance driving me like, oh, I can't do this right. anymore. Like, can you imagine yeah. oh, if yeah. they weren't like right, exactly. Yeah, no, no, I mean, if, if, they're, if they're gone, yeah, it wouldn't be else good. It wouldn't yeah, be good. Exactly. Well, comedy is so healing. So thank you so it much is. for all your work and everything oh, no, you're doing. You. Where thank can people you. find you? Um, at Instagram, Facebook, uh, Danger One on Facebook, on Instagram, and Danger One comes out September 14th. So All I hope right. everyone goes and sees it. Yeah. All right. Thanks All right. Thank you guys. Well, thank it was you a so pleasure much. Thank being you here. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for all your work. Thank you, Brad.